I was initially a little apprehensive about going into a 14-day quarantine again, this time with a two-year-old and a one-month-old. As I considered the daily struggle, though, something happened in my mind and I was able to reframe the whole situation and was actually really looking forward to quarantine, looking forward to reconnecting with my small family, especially with Riley. Over the years, we've forged such a strong relationship and I just love him so much. To be able to wake up and have him there, make breakfast with him, lunch, work all day, and have him right by my side for dinner as well, all whilst trying to come to an agreement on different creative ideas and parenting styles. I would say that perfect is a big word to use, but we really do have a perfect relationship and we love each other, always. now doing another 14 days of quarantine here in Perth. We were not expecting this to happen. You're probably thinking, doesn't look like a bad place to do quarantine. And you're right, I'm gonna tell you why. We've lashed out and got this awesome place. But first, I just wanted to run you through what has happened over the past 24 hours and why. We just spent the last week saying goodbye to all of our friends and Riley's family in Adelaide, which was really sad. Cleaning the Airbnb head to toe. We'd lived in it for two months, so it was pretty much like moving house. And Riley even had the chance to clean out his storage shed. We have a storage shed in Adelaide and he had a bunch of stuff in there from before he decided to buy a sailboat. And we had a really early flight yesterday morning before the sun was even up. It was really messy getting out of the house at that time of morning. But we got on the flight and it felt really nice to be in there. We hadn't forgotten anything, had all the children. And then there was this talk amongst the passengers. And there was just dread. Like I had this sick feeling in my gut. I knew what was going to happen because there'd been COVID cases in Adelaide the previous day and WA are known to just like shut their borders straight away. They're super strict. They're the most strict out of all the states in Australia. So we knew this wasn't going to be good. This isn't good. Any traveller who has been in the state of South Australia in the past 14 days must comply with the following direction. Quarantine at a suitable premise. You must present for a COVID test on the 12th day of quarantine. If you've been in New South Wales, Queensland or Victoria in the last 14 days, you must advise police. And just to repeat, there will be no intrastate travel permitted. The Australian response to COVID has definitely been at one end of a sliding scale. Australia has received praise from some places. Australia's COVID-19 response has been the envy of many countries, with Dr Fauci recently praising the country for being a world leader. But there is no doubt that it's taken its toll on the country, with stimulus increasing the national debt and, honestly, lockdown after lockdown, especially in Melbourne. Perhaps the only piece of remotely consequential insight I've had maybe ever would be to have William McCaskill and Toby Ord from the Effective Altruism Movement, supported by Vagabella Swim, remove all politics by just assessing using only quality, which is quality adjusted life years, and their considerable skill in allocating funds where they are most necessary and replacing both the Prime Minister of Australia and President of the US. Anyway. When there is even one case in Australia, states will close borders, in particular the west of Australia. WA is kind of like the US's south, Texas or something. Resource rich with large extraction industries which have traditionally been such a huge source of income, giving them delusions of grandeur and a comical obsession with seceding, becoming an autonomous nation or a sovereign state or whatever they're always saying. All of that is to say that whilst we were in the air, Western Australia declared South Australia a hotspot, and when we landed, we were told we needed to quarantine. And I just don't know how to feel about that, really. Yes, yeah, suddenly we were here in Perth at the airport not knowing what to do. They said we couldn't catch our second flight up to Geraldton. They said we could drive there though, but we didn't want to drive four hours. And they said we had to drive on the same day. We would have had to quarantine there anyway. So we just thought let's rent an Airbnb here in Perth. So we were looking at rental options and I remembered it's my birthday in a few days. So I said to Riley, if I want to have to do quarantine while it's my birthday, I want to do it in style. <laughs> I'd been meaning to have a day to treat myself. I really wanted to go to the sauna. You can't go in a sauna when you're pregnant. So I was just waiting for my opportunity and it never came. And then I saw this Airbnb and it had a sauna and I was like, this is it. So here we are. We've decided to do like a 14 day, I'm considering it a little detox. Spirits are high at this stage. 
but that's likely to change. So join us, see what we get up to uh, as we probably slowly lose our minds. Hit the subscribe button if you're new here. I'm just waiting here in the rain with the bags while the boys do a trip to the back of the house. Okay, you were right. It was pretty sick. <laughs> like all new houses when you first move into them, it felt pretty sterile and cold. Whilst Riley played around the pool with the kids, I turned on the heater and planned to unpack all of our gear, rub some essential oils around the place and make it feel more like a home. Can you get any some tissues? Yeah, I, I thought know. it was his nose, but yeah. it's not his nose. Is it your lip or your nose? Nice blood. Your lip? Yeah. This is really, really sad, and he hurt himself quite badly, but you should have seen. He had his hands through his shorts, and they were like this. And he was running, and we all thought it was hilarious. And then he tripped over and he didn't have hands to break his fall, but he had his hands through. <laughs> I'm sorry that happened, mate. Do you want some chocolate? Austin. <laughs> Great start. We're letting him have his little guilty pleasure right now because he's so away. upset. Yeah, he's like, oh, I want to watch a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Hey, your big brother Lenny was helping. What happened to Lenny's teeth before? When he smiled, we had a good look and his gums are bleeding from the front and back. Now, a few hours later, his gums look bruised. They're like purple or like a dark brown. So I don't know what's gonna happen. If his teeth are gonna fall out. No, his teeth aren't gonna fall out. Elena was asleep in here. I was looking after Darwin and Lenny was sleeping and Lenny woke up. He asked me for an apple and I gave him the apple and I was completely forgotten about his teeth because he'd been down for a, for a midday nap. We tried to take a bite out of his apple and he just goes, ah! And I ran over and I was like, I was nearly in tears. I was like, oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, mate. The saddest thing I think I will ever see, Lenny bit a bit of apple and hurt his front teeth again and said, Mama, I want to see the doctor. Broke my heart. Can you show me your teeth? Paw Patrol. Over, 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 over. <laughs> No, <laughs> over. Over, 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 over. One day, while exploring the cliffs above Adventure Bay, Captain Turbot slipped and fell down a dark hole. At the bottom, he discovered an old pirate hideout. Pantaloons. Good morning, everyone. Surprise you with a question, rapid fire. Right. What are we going to do in this episode? Why should people watch? Well, we fired a, a harpoon in the direction of the Australian and US governments and various states. Are you to expecting succeed. some backlash? I hope so. And we could just be real people struggling with life. And you think people will enjoy watching that? I would. Have you got good teeth this morning? Yeah. They're a bit better? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're not going to fall out anymore. They might be OK. So Lenny's teeth are still, the gums are bruised, but I think I, I Googled it. Apparently, he's going to be OK. only way I can get Lenny to eat vegetables these days. He used to be such a good eater, now nah, he's too smart. Anything green he will not eat, so the only way I can get him to eat broccoli, kale, spinach, all the good stuff is to hide it in a chocolate smoothie and um, make little popsicles out of it, and he loves it. So good. I can stuff so much broccoli in there and he has no idea.
It's been raining, but whatever. I'm going to use the sauna. Bloody freezing. This is going to be so nice. It's so steamy in here, I can't even film. But this is me really sweaty. Oh, steamy. Now, I'm gonna jump in the pool. I was just saying to Riley, that sauna and freezing cold swim is the best thing I've done, like, probably in a year. I miss, like, Bikram yoga. That's what it was reminding me of when I was in that sauna. There's just no better feeling than pushing yourself to the limit. I just love being hot. Crazy stuff inside me. My heart just. Hey. What are we up to, Riley? Going to get a COVID test. Oh, okay. So, they're letting us play out here on the lawn whilst they process all the paperwork so Lenny doesn't scream because he was getting pretty impatient waiting in line there. And then they're going to call all of us in and we all actually need to get tested, even Darwin. <laughs> So just go this side here. That's it. Good man. Side this side here. Yay, Benny's very nice. You got Benny right on your shirt. Okay? Benny right in the shirt? Yeah, that's right. And just lift your head up a little bit for me. That's a good boy. And I'm just going in for a little tickle. That's it. Good boy. That's good. Oh, my God. That's good. Good boy, baby. Good boy. It's all right. Good yeah, boy. look, here's your lollipop. Have some of your lollipop now. You did a good job. High five. You wouldn't even know how. Now, you lick it. And as you can see, yours is a bit... That's a girl. Now, the best way to do this, when I go in to do the back part of your throat, if you're able to open as wide as you can and give me a nice big... Uh... Are you going to do the throat first? Yeah. Okay. Unless you want me to do it the other way around. No. No? Okay. Yeah. Um, and by going the ah, uh, makes the back of your throat stiff and it makes it less uncomfortable for you. Okay? Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Just tilt up a little bit higher. Give me a lovely ah. Uh, Perfect. Noise later. That was perfect. Now, can we get it? Oh. And I'm going to give you some tissues. Okay. So just be like that. Pickles, and you get a bit of a wasabi, burny feeling. That's a girl. Okay, just on this side here. Sort of pickle, wasabi, burny feeling. That's a girl. Well done. Perfect. What are you up to, Mad Dog? Cleaning his teeth. I oh, know. Oh, my God. Kids are grubs. When's the last time your mother cleaned your teeth, Lenny? I'm going to go for a swim. It's a glorious day. Dad's going to jump in the pool. <laughs> you need to go for a sauna first, that's the key. I'm, I'm not going to lie, it feels like something really bad is happening to my testicles. Oh, OK. <laughs> Might need some surgery. <laughs> As we get very excited about our new boat project, we have made some new merchandise. 
Thanks to everyone who bought something after seeing my Instagram post. If you don't follow us on Instagram, you wouldn't have seen it, but yes, we're super stoked with our new merchandise. We would love it if you picked up something. We got hats, hoodies, shirts, stuff for toddlers and baby. We got baby bonzies. Did you get it? Yeah, and he didn't lose his tail. What does that freak you out, Pants? I don't like lizards. Really? Yeah. Lenny, do you want to come and see the lizard? He's under the table there. <laughs> He's gone now. What have we got, sir? Schmook a lot? New lens. A couple of lens caps. So this lens here is the 100 to 500. We are not sponsored at all by Canon. We should be. <laughs> I'm like so annoyed. I'm going to do Canon a free advert. We've been using their stuff for five years. I messaged them recently on Instagram. Anyway, love especially the R6 that we're using at the moment. When Canon made the move to mirrorless, it just made our life just much more efficient and easier. After we did that, we were able to just concentrate on our cinematography a lot more, which got me to buy the 35mm Prime, which you're seeing this through. This is pretty exciting. And an opportune time to thank all of our patrons for helping out. All of this camera equipment and boats, not cheap stuff to be dealing with. So. Especially the boat part. Especially the boat. <laughs> Although, Especially check, our new boat. check this out. Holy, holy. <laughs> Is it worth the extra Everything. weight we're going to be carrying yes, on board? Yes, it's very good. All right. I can film that bird over there. The one with the long legs? From the boat, we should be able to film stuff not on shore, but close to. <laughs> very su suggestive. Hey, Mr. Darwin. Are you trying to talk to Mum? And so life was pretty normal for us. It's been pretty normal for us since we moved off the boat and onto solid ground again. We did the dishes, worked on laptops and movies and did voiceovers like this one. Cooked, cleaned and went through the song and dance that is getting a two-year-old to sleep twice a day. Often when we're on the yacht in a sandy, calm anchorage, spearfishing and making plans about where we should sail to next, I run out of things to film or it feels like I run out of things to film. It's only when I'm back on land for a while, in a house, in the suburbs, that I realise again how different our life is. And I become really inspired to sail and film and live that life again. Thank goodness it's over, hey? No more complaining from you. Oh, Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, and you gotta count with me, ready? Say one. 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 Two. Three. Three. <laughs> Darwin Francisco Caruso, COVID test negative. Lennon Foster Whitelam, COVID test negative. How did Darwin's COVID test go? It was fine, hey? We didn't film it, but... No, Darwin's was fine. Lenny's was a little bit of a... <laughs> I know. Going in for a little tickle. That's it. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. We should have put him at the back of the chair. I don't know why the lady didn't think to put him at the back of the chair. She, she was lovely. He she threw just, his head back. Yeah, she didn't nail that particular part of it, but... Uh, Got it done. What about our test? Negative. What does everyone think about drinking a hot coffee above your kid like this? You're making me nervous now. It wouldn't burn him. But I have been spilling a lot of food on his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> so what's the deal with this app? People that are slightly to one side of the scale of freedom are gonna say that this is absolutely insane, but it tracks your location. So they made you check in like you just did, you had to take that photo. Yeah. So they track you whilst you're using the app. Yeah, they don't track you 24 seven. That was an option, but you can turn it off. So yeah, they randomly 
every other day. An alarm rings on your phone and you have to check in within five minutes and if you don't, they give you a call and they're like, hey, why didn't you check in? And usually I'm like, it's happened to me a few times because I don't like my phone on loud. I just say I'm attending to the kids, which I am <laughs> most of the time. And they say, okay, take the photo now, please. And so you have to quickly take the photo. And that's when they check your location. Um, and they can randomly rock up at your door but they haven't done that. But that was like a warning at the airport. The lady was like, and just a reminder that the police could show up at your door at any stage, so yeah. And they get you to tick boxes of how you're feeling if you have any COVID symptoms. <laughs> you're in your jumper. Oi, get out of the pool in your jumper.